What's going on, everybody? John Eric Pola here with my MMA news, and today's guest is coming off his first career UFC win at UFC 294. Joined today by Mike Breed and Mike. Thanks for doing this, man, and congratulations on that first UFC win. Hey, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem at all, man. Uh, let's just get started right with, I guess, the obvious question with this being your first UFC win. What are the emotions like coming off that win? Just pure excitement, happiness, just every emotion, really. Um, it's been a long, it was a, it's been a long journey to get there and to get my first win. It didn't really hit me until uh, I got back into the United States airspace. Like, I was like happy and all, all these things, it was just like, kind of like still just in like a shock state of mind, like, you know, um, but then when we, when I realized I was in the United States, I just couldn't stop crying. I was like, Hey, we did it. Like it was just a, a roller coaster of emotions. I, I think I probably cried for like an hour on the plane. Well, I could imagine it definitely is an emotional time and the win also comes at a very good time. So if I'm not mistaken, that was your uh, fourth fight in the UFC. I know usually typically those first fight contracts usually are four fight contracts there. So uh, any word with negotiations about how those are going or is just that's all on management and you'll, you know, let them take care of it? That's all on management. Um, I know they're working hard to to, to make that happen. Um but I don't see why not. I mean, with that kind of performance, you can, you know, you see what I'm capable of and what I'm able to do. I mean, I had that place rocking. Like, that it was super exciting. Like, everybody was going nuts in that arena. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, what would your, I guess, you know, your plea to the UFC be like, hey, make sure you're giving me another contract. Is it just that? Because you noticed that on fight night, that arena was absolutely rocking for your fight. When you started barking like a dog at them and you, you wanted to throw down. That's what the fans want to see when they go there. They want to see a fight like that. Man, I'm an entertainer, man. And um, a lot of people don't do that anymore. They're, uh, they're just, uh, you know, winning by points or, you know, just hugging somebody just to try to secure the win. Like, I told my coach, like, I'm going to just take this dude down and choke him out. But, like, no matter how many times I tell myself I'm going to do that, I can't do that. Like, I, I, when I get in there, I just, like, I want to fight. I'm here to, you know, freaking give the fans what they want to see. Like, and it just, it worked out in my favor last, the other night. Um, and it was amazing. It felt so good. All right, so let's talk about the fight itself. Now, before we get into the actual X's and O's of the fight, let's talk about uh, something that happened before the fight, and that was you had a staph infection. I know you had also missed weight. How much did the staph infection kind of play a role into the the weight cut miss and just your, your training in general, because that's a hard thing to, uh, to you know, with your body to overcome when you're trying to train there? Man, um, no excuses. I mean, I'm... I mean, I shouldn't miss weight, but um, I, it played a part. I mean, I couldn't – it was just out of my control. I did everything I could to make the weight. Um, I got staff the Monday. Uh, so I flew out Sunday. I got staff on Monday. I got medicated on Tuesday and I had 10 days of antibiotics. So I took my last dose of antibiotics Wednesday night. Is when, And then I started weight cut um, Thursday. So, like, it's still in my system, you know, working – and um, it's just uh, it's just sucked the way it played out, but I think that it is a big factor in it. Um, and then um, not being able to train that last week, that last week to push hard because I had to stay away from it to get off the mask and make sure I wasn't contagious and spreading it around the gym. And then um, before that, my I, had, I busted this eye open already. And I busted my cheek open already. So that was the week before that. So having to tone my training down for all that. So the last two weeks of hard push to burn as many calories as you need to burn and to get in the best shape of your life for your fight, I wasn't able to do that. So I'm not making any, I'm not making any excuses, man. Um, I still should have made weight. I believed I could do it. And um, I just felt short. I just uh, got to take it on the chin and keep on moving. Yeah, and you know, I'm glad that you addressed some of those things uh, with the antibiotics and even the stuff with the cut and everything, because I know there was 
uh, some speculation, if you will, of saying, because uh, I know there was, not only you, but there was another uh, fighter who also had a staph infection, people wondering if things were reported, not reported. I'm sure, obviously, all of those things were reported. Also, the, the cut on, right. on the eye, too, I'm sure was also reported. The commission knew about everything. All that was reported. They seen my eye as soon as I landed. They had me checked out by the doctors. I told them I was on antibiotics. I showed them where my staff was at. Um, I told them I'm not blaming. Any, I'm not using that to get out of anything. I took it on the chin. I paid my percentage. Um, and I'm just glad we were able to still fight. You know, I feel horrible, horrible about it. Um, um, but yeah, I just can't. I can't keep thinking about the path this guy move forward. Mm. Exactly. It's the best way to look at it there. But now let's get into the actual fight here itself, which is very entertaining. Uh, we'll start, I guess, with the first two rounds, kind of uh, the, the same story here. And it was he was landing with volume and you could tell that it did not have any effect on you whatsoever. Every time you touched him, he oh, felt he your power. It. Did you get that sense of it inside of there as well? Oh, yeah. Like, um, I got that. Like they were saying um, I was down two rounds. I don't know what fight they were watching. I went back and watched it just to make sure. Um, I won round one. And uh, honestly, round two was close. But the only reason why they maybe gave it to him was because um, he hit me in my eye where my cut was already at. His finger went in my eye, plus he reopened it, and I couldn't see. So I kind of freaked out for a second and backed up and was, like, touching my eye, touching my eye. And everybody's like, oh, wait, he's not Ross. He's just – he keeps touching his eye. Like, so he, he beat me up for, like, a minute. And then I got right back in the fight and started whipping his ass. And um, you can see the tide turning and him starting to break. And then um, I started yelling at him towards the end of round two and barking at him a little bit. And then I just, I knew I had him. I smelt blood. I was a shark in the water and I went to go eat in round three. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask you for round three. It seemed like you had that sense in there that you had him right where you wanted because you put the foot right on the gas in round three, never let up. I guess, was that indeed the, the game plan coming in that last round that you knew oh, you had him hurt, he respected your power way too much, and you were getting them out of there? Oh, yeah. Because, I, I mean, I knew it, and that's why I came out so hot. Um, and round one, we went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, back and forth. And, like, I went to watch those exchanges. They said he outstruck me in round one, but if I went back and watched it, most of those shots hit my bicep and my forearms. Uh, there's only a, like three or four right hands that hit me on the back of the ear and a couple of knees, but all, all those little flurries of exchanges, I won all those exchanges. I hit him four or five times and he'd hit me maybe one, but they, the, the, the strike count was like him out striking me like two to one or three to one. I was like, what are they watching? But it's all good. I got the W and I handled business. So yeah, I'm just excited. I was happy. As you should be, because it was a great performance. And another thing I wanted to ask you, too, with it, I know, obviously, we talked about you barking like a dog. You were talking a lot of smack to him there. Do you think that also played a role in the fight, too? Do you think your trash talk was getting to him inside of the cage there? That's just anybody that's trained with me. That's just how I am. Like, I just, if I'm comfortable and I'm flowing, like, I'm a problem. I talk trash to people in the gym every day. It's just all out of love. That's just who I am. I'm like, oop, got you there. Nope, bop, bop, bop. Like, that's just my style, and I'm glad I got to show some of that because um, uh, UFC hasn't – nobody in the UFC has seen that side of me, but that's just me. Um, but the guys that I train with see that all the time, and I just got to continue to be more – get more comfortable faster so I can let that out and make that my full fight instead of just towards the end of my fight. You know what I'm saying? No, I got you there, man. Uh, I guess just one other thing before we kind of move on here a, a little bit in regards to this fight. Um, we kind of, you know, got through everything uh, here with it. But the big thing was we kind of opened up talking about it where this was such an entertaining fight for the fans. The fans, like the whole entire arena was rocking there. We discussed the trash talk going on during it. The way you were able to put the foot on the gas in that last round, get him out of there. I did not get to see the performance bonuses after the fight. Did you happen by any chance to get a performance bonus? Because I think it was definitely warranted with that performance. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think I deserve one. But um, I'm that's I'm just there to go and hand, uh, do a job is to get my hand raised. So that's up to the bosses. I have not caught wind that I've got one. But that's up to them. I'm not going to worry about that. If I get one, great. Um, you know, that's, that's all up to them. But um 
I thought it was worthy of one, but uh, I'm just there to put on a show for the the fans and get my hand raised. And uh, if I get one, great. You know what I'm saying? But- gotcha, man. I clearly understand there. Uh, let's talk uh, a little bit just about Abu Dhabi in general, though. Uh, fantastic place to go and fight. I know for the last few years with Fight Island, and now I know the fights have moved into an arena and everything, but all of the fighters that I've spoken to have went over there. Nothing but good things to say about it. They really enjoy their time over there. Was it as beautiful as what everybody's been making this out to be? Yeah, it's super beautiful out there. Like the architecture, like everybody out there is so nice. The food was amazing. Like I had sushi out there, like some of the best sushi I've ever had. So fresh. Um, it, it was amazing. Yeah, so I agree with them. It was uh, perfect. Now, I know you said the food was good out there. I was actually my next question for you. Do they have any barbecue for you? Because I know you Midwestern guys love the barbecue out there. And they say that the best the best barbecue in the world comes from that Midwestern region there with Kansas City and everything. So uh, they have any good barbecue for you out there in Abu Dhabi? Uh, I got like a meat platter and it had a little bit of barbecue out there. It was good, but it ain't, it ain't like home. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to talk no trash, but uh, that's the first thing I did when I got back. <laughs> got me some burn ins. All right, man. I appreciate all the time. Uh, again, uh, congratulations on the first win there uh, in the UFC. Hopefully, more to come here. Hopefully, seeing you back inside the octagon in 2024 here. Last thing before you roll out for the day social media so people know where to follow you at. You have uh, management, sponsorships, uh, any coaches or teammates, family, friends you got to give shout outs to, all that good stuff. You get the last word today. Floor is yours. Man, I suck at all this stuff, but let me give it a shot. Um, Mike Breeden, uh, you can find me on, on IG, Money Mike MMA. Uh, let's see. I want to thank all my uh, teammates at Marathon MMA for uh, getting me right for that. My coach, Trey Ogden. Man, we've been in the trenches um, getting ready for that fight. Um, oh, and he's always, like, taking time. Like, I mean, we're doing – like not just one or two privates. I mean, he's always, you know, helping me out to to become better. So thank you. He's an amazing coach, one of the best coaches. Um, and to my best friends that went out with me out there, Trevor and uh, Joe, thank you. And then a uh, shout out to Casey Floor Works. Um, yeah, and that's it, man. That's all I got for you. I think I, yeah, so...